circuit solution using the loop current method. Given all these resistors, and given these voltage sources, determine the loop currents. The circuit contains all voltage sources and no current sources, which is required by the loop current method. Each loop current is defined or assumed to go clockwise all the way around that loop. For example, I1 will create a voltage across R4 equal to I1 times R4 with a positive on the left. I2 will create a voltage across R4 equal to I2 times R4 with the positive on the right. And for the purposes of this method, both voltages will exist simultaneously. After explaining the fundamental assumptions of the loop current method, we will now jump to the final matrix solution. This looks like Ohm's law in matrix form, but it's more. We'll explain more later. V is a three by one matrix, or a column vector. V has three rows and one column. Row one, row two, row three. It's important to keep track of row numbers because they correspond to circuit loop numbers. R times I is a three by three matrix. R times I has three rows and three columns. It's important to keep track of column numbers because they also correspond to circuit loop numbers. The R times I matrix can be separated into the R matrix times an I matrix or vector. To summarize, this is the R matrix and this is the I matrix, and this is the V matrix. The individual elements of the R matrix can be referenced by row and column numbers. This is the 1-1 one, one element. This is the 1-2 element. This is the 1-3 element. This is the 2-1 element. This is the 2-2 two, two element. These are the diagonal elements, some of the resistors in loop one also. This is the sum of the resistors in loop two. This is the sum of the resistors in loop three. The R matrix is symmetrical. R12 equals R21. R13 equals R31, R23 equals R32. R12 equals R21. This is the resistor common to loops 1 and 2 times minus 1. R13 equals R31. This is the resistor common to loops 1 and 3 times negative 1. R23 equals R32. This is the resistor common to loops 2 and 3 times negative 1. This matrix equation looks like Ohm's law, but it's really Kirchhoff's voltage law. Let's examine Kirchhoff's voltage law for loop 1. The voltage drop clockwise around loop 1 are V1 and R4 times I1 and R5 times I1. The voltage rises around loop 1 R. R4 times I2 and R5 times I3. Now write Kirchhoff's voltage law as voltage drops equal voltage rises.
Compare this Kirchhoff's voltage law equation to the top row. Each row is Kirchhoff's voltage law for that loop. Written as voltage drops equals voltage rises. This is Kirchhoff's voltage law matrix equation. R and V are known. I contains all three unknown loop currents. Therefore, the matrix solution is I equals R inverse times V.